Hi, how you doing today? Uh, we often hear, you know, uh, about the word mythology. We often hear about uh, uh, the soul, the resurrection of the soul, which gets us into what they call the eschatology, or or we can call it um, the doctrine of last things. The doctrine of last things because once the soul resurrects, oh, everything's been done. So it's the last thing, the resurrection of the soul. When that happens, hey, we're finished with the struggle, right? So it would be, uh, we could call it the doctrine of last things. Uh, and so what we'll do is show that... Uh, the mythology that we talk about preceded the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul. The concept of the soul and its resurrection then came after the mythology and it and and is based on the mythology. You see. In other words, the concept of the resurrection of the soul was actually based on the mythology. And the Christ was, well, the Christ was the demonstrator. Because he resurrected, right? He, re he resurrected. Therefore, he demonstrated that there's such a thing as the resurrection of the soul. Okay, but we'll go with the mythology first. We'll go with the solar mythology. That's the sun in the sky because mythology, we're talking about natural events. So we're talking about the sun in the sky. There's also a lunar mythology. Uh, we'll get with that uh, on another date. But uh, now we're getting into uh, the solar mythology, mythology of the sun. And we refer to what the sun as the sun god, it's, we refer to him as that, the sun god. But anyway, uh, we see at the fall of the year, autumn, that uh, the days begin to get shorter than the nights. Okay? So this is... Uh, and in, in the folklore and whatnot and in the mythology, they say that the sun god has entered the underworld. They may call it the netherworld. They may call it amenta. Amenta means hidden. So the sun sort of becomes hidden as it descends into the underworld. But when it descends into the underworld, we hear of that great monster, the great serpent, Apep. And they call him Apap. So Apap devours the light, the sunlight, right? As the sun enters the underworld. Well, we know it happens that in uh, the uh, fall of the year, the days become shorter. And because the days become shorter, that is less daylight, less sunlight, they say, well, it is this great serpent, Apap, is devouring the light. That's why the days are shorter. Mm -hmm. So now, as the solar god, as the mythology goes, it goes down deeper into the, uh, the underworld, he cries out for help because he says, well, I'm getting weak, though I'm getting old. You see? I'm losing my power. That is the light. <laughs> I'm losing my power. You know, he needs help and he's crying out for it, you know. And so certain god, goddesses, gods come to his aid. Uh, we say circuit. Okay, circuit. Circuit is the god of the goddess of Scorpio. Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, like October, November, uh, the days are definitely getting shorter. And so the solar god is weak and he's calling out for help. And so Circuit comes to his aid and she comes fighting against this great monster, Apap. 
you know? Oh, they be hitting him with iron bars, and they be throwing hot chains of fire around his neck, holding this beast back, you know? But, so they give up. Uh, help to the soul of God. And so the soul of God is able to continue his journey through the, through the darkness of the underworld dark because we got a uh, few daylight hours. That's, that's all it is. And so uh, they refer to it as uh, this very dark and hidden place, you know what I mean? The fall of the year, the winter of the year, the winter part of the year. And then there's other gods such as the god Shu and uh, Tefnut, his twin sister. These are the two that you see riding on the back of a lion. You know what I mean? Well, Tefnut too, she throws her darts, her fiery darts at Apep, okay? Holding him back, wounding him, and Apep screams out, ah, you know? And then the guy Shu, who rides on uh, the lion along with uh, Tefnut, he shoots his owl, because he's seen with an owl in his hand. Uh, bow, and he shoots his bow, which the dart, okay, is a ray of light. The arrow shot on Shu's bow, we say, is a ray of light that would go to um, support the soul of God and to, <clears throat> to uh, wound the Apep reptile, because Apep reptile, well, he prefers darkness, but he destroys the soul of God because as he destroys the soul of God, there's darkness, and this is what they have like nighttime, okay? And so, anyway, the soul of God continues on his journey, somewhat wounded and battered and beat up, but he continues on his journey, okay? And he reaches uh, the winter solstice. Okay, so he gets sort of a reprieve here because as we cross the solstice, we, when he crosses over here, the days begin to get a little longer. So this means that the solar god is gaining strength now because uh, those goddesses like uh, and the god Shu and Tefnut and Serket, they helped him tremendously, you know, on his journey and struggle through the underworld. But now, he's headed for the spring equinox. He crossed the solstice, the winter solstice, and now he's going to uh, the spring equinox. And when he gets there, when he gets to the spring equinox, he crosses over the celestial equator, the sun and the sky, according to astronomers, he crosses the uh, celestial equator. Oh, I just say the equator sometimes, you know. And well, it does, you know. For at the equator, the days and nights are equal. And uh, so the solar god now really has gained strength. But now he crosses over the equator. At this point, of course, as we know, the days become longer than the nights. And the solar god is supreme. He has, he has, you know, he has, they have vanquished Apep for now, and the soul of God is supreme because he has resurrected. This is the resurrection of the soul of God in the mythology, okay? So we see that this follows from nature. The mythology that we discuss and talk about follows from nature, you know? The events in nature. But now we have uh, the eschatology or the doctrine of last things or the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul. Well, the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul follows from the mythology because the soul also, our soul, enters the underworld in the fall of the year. You know, people say, hmm. I got the winter blues. Well, they're, falling, they're feeling down the dumps. Lack of sunlight. Our soul also uh, appreciates sunlight. Okay? And so uh, we people come up with all kinds of little ills and this or that. You know what I mean? In the uh, fall of the year, in the winter of the year, you know? But this is, these 
okay, uh, telling us that the soul was going through trouble here as it goes through the underworld. It goes through the underworld just like the sun did. And uh, as it goes through the underworld, it, it runs into difficulties too. The APAP is there. He's snipping and sniping at the soul, and we're trying to get through, you know. Like sometimes people have a hard time getting through the night. <laughs> they're, they're, that's their underworld. And their soul, you know what I mean, is somewhat disturbed, you know what I mean. When, when we have trouble traveling through the night, we wake up feeling bad or a bad dream or a bad this or something keep popping up in our mind that we don't want. And because uh, the, the soul gets a little weak at night, as it travels through this underworld, because it doesn't have the sunlight, you know. Uh, it gets a little weak, you know. And so, but uh, it travels on, you know what I mean. And uh, as it travels through the underworld, it, it gets like a reprieve too. It, uh, uh, when we cross the, uh, uh, the, 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 the winter <laughs> solstice, uh, the soul picks up a little, you know what I mean? It begins to get a little stronger, you know what I mean? And uh, then we reach, uh, we reach uh, the equinox, the 22nd of March. This is when the soul of God resurrected, okay? But the Christ doesn't resurrect the equinox. He resurrects at Easter. You know what I mean? So this is so this is a little difference between um, the mythology and the doctrine of last things. You know this this difference. You know. Well, anyway, a difference relative to the resurrection. You know, resurrection of the son, the resurrection of the soul. So anyway, uh, the Christ now is the demonstrator of the resurrection of the soul. Jesus talked about such things. You know, but the Christ was the fulfiller, because he's the one who resurrected, you know. Okay, but now we're talking about the resurrection that occurs at Easter, okay. So Easter comes from, follows from, um, is that the first Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox, that's Easter. It comes on a Sunday. First Sunday after the first full moon after the equinox, we have Easter. So now this is the resurrection of the Christ. You know, the demonstrator of a truth. In fact, the demonstrator of the second truth, which is here, the, the most important truth. Jesus was the first truth, you know what I mean? He did his demonstrations and whatnot. He talked to his... Uh, disciples, you know what I mean? But remember, the, the disciples didn't know what he was talking about. They couldn't understand. Oh, he was talking, he was talking, uh, hecka, words of, words of power, you know what I mean? They didn't understand him. He was using the unwritten word, words of power. But anyway, now, Jesus is the demonstrator of the resurrection. Um, excuse me. The Christ is the demonstrator of the resurrection of the soul. And it comes on Easter. But we see that the eschatology or the doctrine of the resurrection follows from the mythology. The mythology was first. You can call them two truths, too. You can call the mythology a truth, the first truth, and you can call... Uh, the resurrection, the second truth, because the resurrection uh, it was the, uh, the uh, fulfillment, okay? And so uh, there we have the difference between uh, the resurrection of the soul and the mythology. Now, some folks call this doctrine of the resurrection of the soul, they refer to it as eschatology, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's just a different word, you know. So I tend to go along with uh, the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul because I think people are more uh, able to uh, follow what I'm saying. Eschatology, we have to go to the dictionary and all that stuff. 
So, uh, which is all right, but uh, the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul, okay, it was demonstrated by, was demonstrated by the Christ, okay. 